Hello and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. It's great to have you join us again. I am Tyre Salam. We're starting off uh, not on a great note at all. That's because the Super Eagles of Nigeria were shocked by Central African Republic in the Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifier that was played right here in Lagos. The Super Eagles crash landing badly right there in front of their home supporters. We have details of all of that for you in the course of the program. Also on sport this morning, this time around still talking football. France are through to the final of the UEFA Nations League with a dramatic 3-2 victory over Belgium. Theo Hernandez scoring that last minute winner for the Blues. Also on sport this morning, and still talking football. It's a new era for Newcastle United after a Saudi-led consortium ended Mike Ashley's 14-year ownership of the club. All right, so great news for Manchester. No, Newcastle United supporters are uh, following the takeover of their club by Saudi-led consulting. You can stick with us uh, for the next 55 minutes for all of these and more on the show. I'm not flying solo. Jide Olaniro joins me once again on a beautiful Friday morning. Jide, always great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Tyler. Good morning. Mm. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show with you. I'm surprised you've got a smile on your face. Right. I thought, uh, I thought it would be a on. frown. <laughs> life goes on. <laughs> Indeed, life goes on. Uh, but we're going to get to all of that. Uh, I imagine uh, the backlash is quite strong uh, after that performance uh, and the results uh, for Nigeria yesterday against the wild beasts of Central African Republic. We're going to get into all of that uh, later on. We've got a comprehensive review of everything that went down at the Tesla in Balogun Stadium. But before we go into that, on Saturday morning, early Sunday morning uh, Nigerian time, Deontay Wilder will be attempting to reclaim his WBC heavyweight title from Tyson Fury. Everything is set. We've seen the presses. Uh, we've seen uh, fighting talks uh, from both boxes. But all that is going to be over in a matter of um, in about 24 hours, uh, 48 hours thereabout. And these two guys will be settling uh, their scores in the ring. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Um, the third installment of the trilogy yep. between these two, two boxers. Um, uh, for, for, from the point of view of uh, Tyson Fury, there is no, actually, I, I, he said it at, in one of the um, media, in, in one of his media tours, uh, that uh, he had nothing again to prove. Mm. Of course, he's done it twice. Yep. Um, it is, uh, don't take that. Um, the owners lies on right now to prove everybody around to 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 let the world know that uh, he is a better fighter mm. and so uh, i know that uh, the big thing is that everybody is looking up to this because of the hype that comes with it they've mm. been able to hype because uh, that we had to wait this long you remember that uh, um, it was supposed to, we were supposed to have like a Tyson Fury, uh, Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua bigger, yeah. because while that was going on, uh, you know, uh, there were talks, there were different, you know, people were keeping, they kept people waiting. Mm. And, uh, but eventually, the fight is just, like you said, less than 24 hours from now. And mm. uh, let's see what Dante will be able to do. You know, there's two different fighters. Uh, Dante has the... Powerful punches that right. he throws while, you know, Tyson Fury is highly mobile, moving around. Mm. So let's see whether he's been, um, right now, uh, let's see whether Dante now knows how to, you know, be, you know put, catch him in the corner mm. of the squared ropes and maybe keep him in other spots to, mm. that will give him the opportunity to really throw those uh, power, his punches. Pump, power, power punches. But yeah. if it's the same or same, I'm sorry for him. Mm. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, let's take a look at the tail of the tape involving uh, both boxes now. This is just going to give us an idea of uh, who's likely to come out on top on Saturday night in Las Vegas. But it doesn't mean um, it's not straightforward as that. Anyways, let's start with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, um, 32. Jones Award is 35. Uh, Tyson Fury is still unbeaten, while Deontay Wilder has lost uh, just one bout, and that was against against Tyson Fury. Knockouts, obviously, uh, they don't call Deontay the bronze bomber for nothing. He's got uh, absolute bombs in his hand, and that's mm. why he's got 41 KOs. 
Tyson Fury is a slightly taller fighter. He's got a slightly longer reach as well, too. Both fighters fight from the orthodox stance, so no southpaw involved in this one, like we saw in the fight between Anthony Joshua and Alexander Yusik. Of course, Tyson Fury representing the Great Britain, while John Tawada is representing the United States of America. So I haven't seen all of this now. Um, where are you uh, putting your money? I mean, not literally. Uh, well, well for, for me, uh, I think uh, I'll still call it for Tyson For Tyson Fury, Fury right. Yeah, because you've done it twice. Uh, it's just to, uh, just, uh, you know, yeah, just uh, confirm the obvious. Again, mm -hmm. confirm what everybody is really know. Mm -hmm. What will make it interesting is if um, Dante Wilder can turn the tide. But the way it's looking, uh, mm -hmm. I doubt it. Hmm. Really, I doubt it. Most I'll times I've been wrong, but, but but this time around, who knows? I mean, right. Yeah, but Tyson, I mean, John Wilder is, uh, after what happened in the second fight, has changed mm. uh, his camp, mm -hmm. fired uh, the former coach, uh, has brought in new uh, a trainer, uh, Malik Scott, and I don't know if you've seen uh, videos of his, uh, Deontay his time, his sparring, training, his training, and all that. Mm -hmm. It looks good. It looks in great shape. Everybody um, looks good. They would look good. They look good, good in training, right? Training, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a different ball game when you get that. When you, get, when you see <laughs> opening, <laughs> or when you get punched <laughs> in the face. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got a game plan. Uh, yes. Until, got, until, you get, get, until you get to the beach and get to the square room. Yeah, yeah. so that's it. Okay. Everybody's got until that's it. So, okay. I all right. Wish. We'll see. Fingers crossed uh, mm -hmm. uh, for that trilogy uh, about uh, between Tyson Fury. And uh, Deontay Wilder today is the way in, and a lot of talks about Tyson Fury being really heavy. Uh, from what we've seen, it yeah, looks yeah. like it's going to be a lot heavier mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. in the Detroit. second bout as mm -hmm. well. So some, some of his fans are worried if that might yeah. impact on his performance. But I, just says, hope, I just hope he's not. not because he also needs to work. Yeah. He has a tendency to always to blow up. To blow up, yeah. And you know, I, and I, I hope he's not uh, underestimating. Un underestimating because he's done it twice, mm -hmm. and you know that's uh, that that would be his own making, really. Because I, I, uh, but but from what I've seen, and um, he's also I've seen some of the videos of his own also sparing with the Nigerian and all that, yeah. and I know that um, that Nigerian ha also has some style with Dionte. And you know he's also. But they, 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 from the feedback, you could see that he's still very mobile. This the Tyson Fury that we know in yeah. terms of mobility, mm. in, terms, in terms of his reach. You know, uh, you know he's got the long reach of uh, you know when he throws his jab and all that. Yeah. Still there intact. So let's just see uh, what, what happens. But for me, I think he's still the Tyson Fury that I know. Mm. The yeah. last time I watched it, but like you said, and it's always like that in boxing. You always have you have your strategy until you get to the ring and yeah. everything blows up. Yeah, and so you get punched in the mm -hmm. face. Um, I can see where you're coming from in terms of tipping Tyson Fury uh, to win his bout. Uh, the fact that he's done it before, the mm -hmm. fact that he's a better boxer, and the fact that he can actually mix it up as well to if he wants to turn into a, a, a fight. Mm -hmm. Tyson Fury, I mean, free for all. Free for all. he can yeah, do that exactly, as well. Exactly, so he's a gypsy, exactly, exactly, you know. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. They grew up fighting and mm -hmm. trying to protect themselves from a very young yeah, yeah. Uh, age and all of that. So I can see why a lot of uh, pundits are, you know, tilting mm -hmm. towards uh, Tyson Fury winning. But you can never discount a, a fighter like Once John Tawada exactly. because a punch can't turn your lights exactly. off. You and could that, miss that's it, it takes. somewhere and the punch comes in. You don't know where it comes from. Yeah. That's usually how boxing. You just don't know. Before you know it, you look, um, you know, you you see one person looking like a twin, mm. and that's and that means you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll just uh, summarize it uh, by saying uh, that um, Tyson Fury yes is a favorite for this fight, uh, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Deontay Wilder, mm -hmm. you know, lands uh, something, and uh, and that might just be the end of the fight. Uh, but uh, we will say it pounds. That's Tyson Fury right there, trying to dismiss uh, any worries that you have mm -hmm. about his weight. Uh, he says it doesn't matter weight, size, anything like that to beat anybody. He can weigh 14 stone and knock a man's pack out, a 25 stone man. Yes, that's true. It depends on what you carry in your hands. It doesn't really matter the weight. I am not aiming for any specific weight. I am just eating plenty of food. I have trained hard enough, and that's it. Whatever I weigh, whatever I weigh, uh, on the nights I weigh in 
act. So he's not too Trust bothered. Him. That's typical of him. Not plays down bother. most of people's worries. Mm -hmm. that is always, and it's always worked for him. He mm -hmm. plays down no matter what, actually, you know, what, how people feel about him. You, you always play down that don't worry. It's um, the punch, the punches will do the talking. We'll do the talking, yeah, not the so weight, the not the size. Indeed. Jide, you mentioned um, Tyson Fury mm. uh, sparring with a Nigerian. Yeah, that yeah. Nigerian is Efea Jagba. Yeah, Efea yeah. Jagba is going to be involved in this particular World Heavyweight Championship bout between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder yeah, as well, so yeah. because he's fighting on the undercard yeah. against Frank Sanchez. Mm -hmm. So all Nigerians better tune in for this one. Nigeria's heavyweight contender, Efea Jagba, went to the Olympics in Rio. We saw how... He got into the quarterfinals, didn't make it past that stage. But he's turned professional since then, and he's amassed a fantastic record. Are still unbeaten, knocking out opponents left, right, and center. It's going to be an action against Frank Sanchez of Cuba. So that's a very, very tricky, it's a tricky, uh, one. tricky bout this for... this is a champion himself, too. Exactly, it's unbeaten fighter as well. Fighter. So, so take a look at the tail of the tape uh, quickly, uh, GD, before I get your thoughts on it. Uh, Frank Sanchez is older. Um, bout is 18 to 15 in favor of Frank Sanchez. He's got the more experience there. Uh, he's never lost. Actually, both never lost. In terms of chaos, you can see Frank Sanchez got that as well, too. He's shorter than Efea Jagba. He's got the shorter reach, both five from the orthodox stands. And it's Cuba versus Nigeria on the night. How do you see this all playing out? The Cuba versus Nigeria and boxing back again. It's you just uh, take us back memory lane, especially in the days of amateur boxing mm. in the, at the Olympics. Mm. But this is at the professional level. Um, I think um, Efe needs to watch it awesome. because this guy's got a lot of experiences coming into Efe. He's uh, pretty still new in the game, yeah. like in terms of you know experience and all that. True. Uh, but you can discount the fact that or discountenance the fact that Efe too has what it takes in terms of reach, height, and. Um, the fact that uh, he also has his eyes mm. set on uh, the bigger picture. Exactly. Uh, because he wants to also uh, move on to the heavyweight game, the series heavyweight category where he can also give the shot. He wants to fight for the title as well. Fight, where he can, where he, when he can fight for the title. It's going to be quite interesting, but uh, it will be good. As a Nigerian, I want to call it on, on the, I want to be on the side of Ivia Jagba. Because of course. That, that, that's good for... Uh, the sport in Nigeria. Yeah, because, last uh, time we had. I look forward to um, when he's there or if, if he wins this. I look forward to him coming home to do something or just the uh, as encouragement for those uh, many of the boxers that mm. we have in Nigeria. That's Indeed. The, what I'm looking that Indeed. perspective that I have because I know that there are many of them for a country that has produced if you are Jagba. You might say um, Anthony Joshua didn't grow up in Nigeria, but mm. the, if you are Jagba is a Nigerian born, grew yeah. up in Nigeria, yeah. and he even fought for Nigeria, and the Olympics, represented Nigeria, and, yeah. and uh, you know, for, for a country that has produced if you are Jagba, not to be at the Olympics, mm. last Olympics, yeah. says a lot. So with this, I think uh, um, the likes of Ifi and the rest of them that are trying to make name for themselves can uh, inspire some of our young ones, mm. who are many of them. Talented. Many of them. Many talented, talented boxers are mm. across the park, across the parks uh, in Nigeria. But for uh, Ifi at Jagba, very interesting comments coming from the coach, uh, the managers, and the camp of Frank, uh, Frank Sanchez are saying uh, pretty much that they understand and they acknowledge uh, FA's power, mm. but their fighter is faster exactly. and technically superior by miles, and, mm -hmm. and that's the way he's going to win this bout. Exactly. Uh, I know um, that's why I'm a bit skeptical, but like you said, you know, uh, boxing, can it could go either way, you know, either because ways. especially if uh, the other side, um, is kind of uh, underestimating what um, if he could do on that night because it's different. I, I, I don't think they'll be underestimating him at all. But I know he's, uh, like I said, the experience is that he's quicker, he's got a lot technically, he's got it's better. But uh, let it's, it will avail if he also the opportunity to, to do, to see how he can tackle or he can go against the, a fighter so, like that. So, so one thing is uh, almost uh, sure. It looks like. Uh, this is about to be a phase uh, toughest test. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the you know, the heavyweight the division. The higher you go, the tougher this bout are. Exactly. So for him to have gotten this fight, this is a true test of a champion. That we, if you want to be a champion, you want to move to the heavyweight category, then 
if you come out of this unscathed, then we know that you're ready. All right, fingers crossed. Uh, we will be keeping an eye on that bout. Hopefully, if he Jagba can defeat Frank, uh, Frank Sanchez on the undercard of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury trilogy bout and take another step towards, uh, you know, perhaps becoming a heavyweight champion of the world. Nigeria once had Samuel Peter ruling that particular division. I'm talking about the WBC Heavyweight Championship. We need to go on a break now. When we come back, we're listening to if a Jagba has got a message for Nigerians. Join us after this. Uh, I'm looking forward to October 9. It's going to be a good fight and it's going to be, you know, explosive fight, you know what I mean? So uh, I can't wait. It's just two days still, you know. Uh, I'm looking forward to the fight. I've already confident, all the hard work, everything I put on training, I'm going to put everything in the fight. And guess what? Don't miss this fight, please. Don't miss this fight October 9. It's going to be great. Trust me. Believe me. It's going to be a good fight. Stay blessed. It's going to be a good fight today. Hopefully, if your Jagba comes out on top in that particular bout and takes another step towards perhaps becoming the heavyweight champion of the world, right? She sounds very confident yeah. as well. This girl has invited everybody <laughs> to come watch. And uh, uh, that's the only, the, th the only thing we can do for him is to, you know, support, rise, support him, yeah. keep praying, keep him in our prayers and encourage, send him some encouraging words okay. as he uh, goes out against uh, Frank Sanchez. All right. Yeah. All the best to Efe Jagba in that bout. Let's leave boxing for now and go on to track and field. Not great news concerning Nigeria's blessing of Kagbari. That's because she's now facing three charges in her doping case. Yesterday, the Athletics Integrity Unit uh, came out with the charges. Uh, it's quite uh, a lot. Uh, like I said, three. Um, the doping case surfaced uh, just before the 100-meter semifinals at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. According to the AIU, Okagbari tested positive for the blood booster EPO yeah, in, Nigeria in Nigeria in June, mm -hmm. in addition to another failed test for human growth hormone that was in Slovakia in July, which was announced uh, during the Olympics. Okagbari is also charged with failing to cooperate with the investigation after she disobeyed an order to produce documents, records, and electronic storage devices in relation to the other charges. She's denied all of these accusations, and she's requested our personal disciplinary hearing. Where are we going with this? It doesn't it's look good at all. It doesn't look good because uh, uh, I understand that uh, from, from the release by the Athletics in Integrity Unit also, um, is, she's been trying to evade, she's not cooperating, you know, and all that. But, but like I said, there, there's an anticipation that, that when you look at the, 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 how this started, you, you, everybody, in terms of those who manage uh, sport as, as well as athletics in Nigeria mm. should also take part of the blame because I, I asked myself that um, uh, it's we nobody maybe some people who were in athletics were the only ones who knew that there was no um, doping units that in, in the country until be the, the, be the who actually had the responsibility to test that was why 10 of the, the uh, Nigerian athletes. Yeah, but that's, a, that's a different matter. Yeah, this yeah. is blessing of Kagbari's yeah. personal if situation. They were done, yeah, a personal situation. But what I ask myself that if they had done that, we had tested as a country, they, they were, that we had tested all our athletes before the Olympics, then you would have known, like what happened in the US, uh, I can't remember the athletes now, who she tested for marijuana and she wasn't allowed to go to the Olympics. Shikari Richardson. Richardson, yeah, exactly. She yeah. wasn't allowed to, so we would have prevented, instead of going to maybe uh, uh, causing a, a global embarrassment now, maybe we would have, you know, um, forestalled this from happening. You know, that's what I feel because everybody should because there was we had infighting. So, 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 uh, yeah, I, I get what you're saying from uh, administrative uh, point uh, of view, but in track and field, uh, the water code, uh, every athlete mm -hmm. is strictly uh, responsible, responsible for where yeah, they goes should into the system. A strict liability 
uh, policy principle. Uh, so you, you have to declare that wherever you are. So yeah, that's on you. That's yeah. on you. And uh, for, what, for, what, ex what? Pure, for an experienced athlete like uh, Blessing Okagbari, you just find it very strange that she's uh, uh, found herself we in this should, kind of situation should, at this stage of his career. Yes, she's I, been in the game for such a long exactly. time. Exactly. It's been quite unfortunate. It's with quite, anything doping. Yeah, Tayo, so, it's quite unfortunate that this is happening because the least she can get, if eventually she's found guilty, is four years. And that will add, that's, if you have that to our age now. But uh, that's, it's quite of a, this is not the way to end a good career. Not at all. An illustrious career that she's had. But I just felt that, you know, there are times we are prevented from harming ourselves. You know, there, there is a collective, and I feel that that is what those who should, who were admit, who, those who have been saddled with the responsibility of administering the game also should do on the sports too. You help some of these athletes at times. I know, but you, you don't overgrow, uh, or you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't overgrow, you know, regulation. You don't, or we, people, the people should look hard for it. But maybe we've learned our lesson, though. Uh, and I, I, it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate. We've learned, I want to believe we have learned our lessons from this. Fingers this crossed. This is our best, one of the our athletes, you know, elites. Mm. Top athletes. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, quite a shame. Uh, but we will uh, continue to monitor uh, that situation. Once again, Blessing Okagbari denies all of the charges and has requested a personal disciplinary hearing. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, but one thing is sure, she's in a very, very sticky spot and uh, we'll see if she can come out of it. Uh, yeah, fingers she, crossed. Uh, uh, it's very, very, she's in uh, very tough right one. Down, but yeah. very tough, very so, tough. Yeah, yeah, tough situation to be in. Anyways, uh, so that's it for Blessing Okagbari. As soon as we get uh, any other updates uh, on her situation, you'll be the first to know on Channel Sports uh, this morning. All right, let's get on with the show now. We're going to talk about the Super Eagles uh, very soon because I know uh, you all are uh, champion of the beat uh, to react to what we saw yesterday at the Tesla in Balogun Stadium. But before then, uh, let's tell you about uh, grassroots sports uh, developments right here in Lagos where Lagos State athletes and officials have continued preparations for their sixth edition of the National Youth Games. Uh, it's a close campaign going on right now involving all of the athletes, are, they are training at the Mobalaji Johnson Sports Complex. That was in Rural Park, Yaba, and uh, the Anglican House as well, to so Bariga, as well as the Teslim Balogun Stadium. So these are the places all of these uh, fantastic talents are getting ready for the National Youth Games. Team Lagos will present 260 athletes in 33 sports at the Games, which begins in Elori next week. The Lagos State Sports Commission is aiming to finish top of the medal table after ending in second place behind Delta State at the last edition. The Federal Minister of Youth and Sports Development has announced that the only athletes under the age of 15 are eligible to participate in the Youth Sports Festival. This is uh, fantastic, what we always yeah, say, always catching been... them young, uh, giving them the opportunity. I mean, look at sports like uh, shooting. shooting you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is good, of course. Uh, it's been on for like about two, because I, I remember that it's uh, a sixth, it's edition, sixth now. edition now. Yeah. I think uh, Ilori, they beat it to host it um, three times. I think this is the last of uh, the, the hosting rights that they, 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 they got, and it's good that a good, another state should take it up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be nice to see. Um, this is a novel, it's a novel idea, and it has produced some of this. Um, some, some athletes have gone there, even some of them had, uh, had progressed further to even feature in, at the <laughs> National Sports Festival. Yeah, so, I mean, that's uh, a natural, just, uh, natural progression, mm -hmm, natural the progress step for them to take from the youth games to the National Sports Festival. And I'm seeing these uh, very interesting the wrestling, pictures, that's wrestling, wrestling as well too. Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, we might be seeing the new Blessing of Borodudu or Dwayne Adekoroye mm -hmm. uh, from these games. There you go, gymnast as well to perfecting her skills for the national youth. Uh, I game. think it's also Fantastic going to serve stuff. as a peer review for some of the states mm. because um, most times it's always been dominated by Delta and Lagos. Uh, let's see, we, by the time the uh, games end, we should be able to look at the log and do a kind of peer review. So, Jide, it's not coincidence that Delta usually come top mm. when it comes to sports, sports generally yeah. because they invest a lot of money in the athletes. So, that's and why so we are, it's good for us to do peer review. But while the other guys the do it, they're not. States, they're, we should ask them at the end competing. of the day, we look at the 
the log at the end of the games and ask questions because what are you, you don't have exactly states? you don't have like when you say um, the, the population the country's population uh, it's uh, it has an and in, we have an, an enormous population of the youth, youth right, exactly yep. and they, the, the larger percentage of that population of youth. Is a youth and mm. now you are not investing even in sports so that's where the questions should start you know the queries should start going flying what and you, you should doing? ask, ask yourself, what are you guys doing <laughs> that's very view too yeah, yeah that, that's what that's the thing we just saw uh, from the squash to table tennis to wrestling to karate to judo it can go on and on it's just fantastic i'm looking forward to the national youth games the sixth edition Pretty let's lovely. get reactions now now coming from the officials of Lagos State are telling us more about the preparations for the games. With the commitment of uh, Mr. Governor in uh, sport development and infrastructure development that, we, that has been going on in the last uh, um, six to eight months, I mean, we have no other options than to repay the good work, the good deal by coming tops. Uh, in the in, uh, forthcoming uh, National Youth Games in Italy. I mean, this is the longest camp, uh, campaign period that we ever had uh, as a preparation for any games. Uh, we started uh, sometime last week, and uh, which by extension is going to get up to the 10th of, uh, of the month before we leave uh, Lagos for, for the running. I mean, uh, the happiness should in the faces, on the faces of uh, athletes is a good thing for us, but it does need to be translated into good acting by winning uh, the, the competition itself. Uh, that was um, Tony Gaffar, the DG of the Lagos State Sports Commission, speaking ahead of the National Youth Games in Lauren. I was talking about uh, Lagos State uh, preparations uh, for that competition. I wish them all the best uh, in, in Lauren. All right, let's get over the show now. It's time to talk about the big one that went down uh, yesterday at, not at the Testing Balogun Stadium, the shocker of perhaps of the year uh, when it comes to football, the Central African Republic. Our team, miles, ra ranked miles below Nigeria on the FIFA ranking, coming right here to Lagos uh, to get all three points in the FIFA World Cup uh, qualifier. A lot of other uh, interesting games were played That's yesterday the, across mm, the continent, but exactly. this particular one... is the one that interests <laughs> This particular <laughs> one has totally taken the shine that, away that from... you. In, of course. Yeah, because you have an interest. Yeah. Because, because yeah, yeah. Nigeria's trying to get to the World Cup, and mm. I'm not saying uh, the result is uh, uh, it's totally uh, ruined the chances of doing it. Well, it was just quite, uh, it was very disappointing. It the was performance. Uh, just a reality check. And, and, you, and, you the, said, and the well, outcome. Can I read before, you, before you go on, oh, I know you're, you're champion at the beats as well, too, to uh, talk about this. Uh, let us introduce uh, to you from London a sports uh, journalist, the former Nigerian footballer, Jide Ulubodi. Jide, good morning. It's great to have you on the show. Good morning. It's good to be on the show as well. Thank you very much uh, for having me on the show. Indeed. All right. So I'll just uh, let you have the first uh, bite or take the first stop at what you saw yesterday between Nigeria and the Central African Republic. To you, what really went wrong for the Super Eagles? Um, well, looking back at the game, I mean, uh, first of all, football happened. I mean, we've seen uh, through the years now that um, the gap is getting closer between the so-called big teams and the small teams all over the world, not just in Africa, in Europe, in uh, South America as well. Um, I think uh, uh, Central African Republic, they got the tactics right yesterday. Mm. Uh, I watched the game and uh, from the first half, uh, I realized that uh, they came with a low block they put eight players behind the ball and just two players up front just to cause a little bit of problems. And uh, they worked out their system very well. They obviously had studied the uh, Super Eagles. They know we like to play through the middle. So uh, the antidote to that was uh, to have a fast, effective counter-attack strategy, which worked very, very well as well. Mm. So if you look at that game, uh, we didn't have any shot, you know, until like the 37 minute, I believe, when Osime... Uh, as ball uh, hit the post. So they actually came very, very prepared for us as well. 
And to be honest, um, uh, we, we also, I mean, let's be honest, we, we missed important players. Uh, I'm not saying some players are better than the others, but uh, in DD, Wilfred is one of the top uh, midfielders in uh, in the Premier League, True. you know, and uh, interceptions and breakup plays. So, I mean, going to the goal, we could see uh, how we missed him as well. Etebo is out as well. Iwobi was not around. But I'm not giving excuses for them. I think that uh, it shows you how tough nowadays uh, it is to break down uh, uh, these uh, so-called uh, small teams. True. Uh, they gave us no spaces at all to run into. And uh, any, any kind of threat that we post with pace, they kind of nullified it with the low block. So there was nowhere to run to. Mm. And uh, I believe at some point uh, we should probably have just reacted. But uh, just like uh, the fans, the Nigerians, I think uh, everybody underestimated them and thought this was going to be a walkover. Mm. So, and uh, yeah, I think that's what happened, really. They had the best chance of the game. We had the yeah. one in science, 66 minute. That True. was a free kick. We had, we had six defenders against two car players. Yeah, that's and, it. And uh, yeah, one of them still found himself alone with our goalkeeper. So, you know, I think it's lessons learned. Lessons learned indeed. Uh, we're going to see uh, that uh, the concession of the goal uh, against uh, Nigeria very soon. Um, but Jide, okay, yeah, Jide, Jide. Mm. Yeah, so Jide has talked about uh, how the Central African publics came with a perfect game plan mm -hmm. and they executed to a T. What about Nigeria? What kind of game strategy, plan, what strategy. kind of game plan did you see from Genaro's side? Well, well I think. For, uh, I can't really say what the strategy was, if I have to write from... Because um, it looked like it was a lot right of individual from, play yesterday. Uh, three, when you look at the, yeah, that we, we, that the even right from uh, the pre-game, you could see um, the, the sound bite was how uh, we, were, we, we, we didn't have the required midfielders that mm. would make the job work for the, for the manager. So you say he was trying to get his excuse in early? Already, yeah, because he said, I remember the first interview that he had when the list was released was they asked him about uh, when it was confirmed that uh, Itebo uh, and Wilfred, Wobi and Wilfred were, he, said, he said that there would be problem in the midfield. So, mm. And I said, if you knew that as a manager, what did you put in place to make sure that those guys were not felt, you know? But I was watching, when I, when I was watching, I just felt that, you know, all through the, the fact that those guys had their strategy, I felt that they, the midfield were non existent at some point. Mm -hmm. It's when they, when they moved from their own defense, before you know what is happening, they were catching us on the counter, or they were catching us on where. You, you, you could see that they had more chances than even Nigeria yesterday in terms of. Chances that th there was a particular one that um, was with Jamie Collins that mm. you know, it was exactly the referee. I remember that the referee said that there was a pushing. Actually, there was actually pushing. There was a push You there. could see. You could see that these people were becoming deadlier as the match progresses. Mm. You know, and I wasn't shocked by the, the way that the, the goal even came, came eventually. eventually. I, wasn't you were, you were, I wasn't shocked because you could see that we were wall. pressing. At some, we got so frustrated that at some point we were moving high. Yeah, that's they because had, they were chasing a goal. They wanted exactly. to get a goal. We like, and I game. knew that they had tendency, especially the two black men that we had, they had tendency to commit that kind of blunder they did yesterday. Really? Most times, yeah. When you watch well, them play, when Leon you and them, the, they had that tendency. Truth. Because, yeah, because they, 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 you could see that. Look at, for example, I, I, don't, I, I wish we could we would see uh, the, 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 the great the, the goal. Incident, right? yes, yeah. They were pushing. They were, they were mistakes. And, they were, and if they had fantastic strikers mm. they would have scored more than one yes more than one yeah they would have scored more than one because like jita said in london there was a chance for one of the strikers mm -hmm. one v one with the goalkeeper that, they, that, that they, you could see the reaction from say, their bench that how like, could that you, have been a how goal. Could you we, we, so this is the moment uh that we all you very, see they um, had that but you could see it they had they've been doing it that was the only one that we considered they did like two or three of those kind of things that were threatened. Uh, could have been easily defended uh, by the defenders. They had, 
Uh, man, uh, I know that I know again. that uh, the, the 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 gap is closing up, but uh, on a good day, none of these eleven players could pull a magic. Wow! Wow! It's on, on, it is unacceptable. I mean, celebrations at the end. It, it is unacceptable, this. and at the end of the day, no press conference. That's yeah. insulting to the media. <laughs> Jude That's is insulting. Jude yeah. is not happy today for obvious uh, reasons. Insulting. Uh, let's just tell you, uh, we need to go on a break now. But the guy that scored the goal uh, for the Central African Republic, Carl. Munganda plays in the fourth division in France. Let that sink in. We need to go on a break now. When we come back, uh, we're still uh, going to be wrapping up our discussion on the Super Eagles. Uh, what, next, uh, what next for them? Of course, the next game for them is against the same opposition on Sunday away from home. Join us again. You're welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. Like Jide was saying, Jide is very pissed uh, that after the game, Genoa was a no-show for the post-match presser. I mean, that's uh, um, perhaps uh, because of what happened, uh, the loss. Uh, and, uh, but there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse. Football because, is a media game. You don't do that. Can up. you do that in Europe? Can you, it's, it's, an, it's a European. He can't do that. Mm. If he was in charge, he's a German, Franco-German. Can he do that? Why, if he's handling a, a French or, not, or a German team? No, you can't. You can't do that. And I don't blame him. Of course, there are excuses. He has not been paid his uh, eight month salaries and all yeah. that. What if, if you don't like the, if you if you are fed up with the job, then quit, quit. Let let another person take over. Mm. You know, of course, uh, there, there are blames for those who even employed him in the first place because I don't know why why they would they would have allowed um, all that is happening happen. You know, okay, it's about priority. priority. Mm. We we the, if you are owing him for what reason? Why are you owing him? You, um, you, they, you're owing him, you, you're organizing uh, awards and all the other things, frivolities and yeah, all that. This is, this is not know. good. This is not good at all. Uh, it's not it's good. not good. Uh, we can't be losing to the Central African Republic. No. Yeah, I'm not turning up it's to tell 122 the on the world, uh, FIFA World Ranking. Anyways, and, uh, no. we got to move on. Uh, like I said, at the start of the sure. show, that victory for CR kind of overshadowed every other thing that went down on the continent uh, yesterday including victories for tiny Equatorial Guinea over Zambia. Let's take a look at some of the results of the other matches played uh, across the continent uh, for the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Nigeria lost against Central African Republic. You know about that already. Cape Verde defeated Liberia away from home by two goals to one. That group is now wide open. Yep. Nigeria will have to go and win on Sunday. No doubt about it. DR Congo to all over Madagascar. There were also wins for Benin Republic, Equatorial Guinea, like I said. Uganda, Tunisia still unbeaten, as well as Mali. Other games that will go down today, you have Malawi versus Cote d'Ivoire, Angola, Gabon, Cameroon, Mozambique, mm. Algeria, Niger Republic, Djibouti versus Burkina Faso. While on Saturday, it's going to be Ethiopia versus South Africa, Guinea, Sudan, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Togo will take on Congo, Guinea-Bissau versus Morocco, and Senegal versus Namibia. On Sunday, this is what concerns Nigeria, Nigeria versus Central African Republic in Douala, Cameroon. Those are the other fixtures for the rest of the weekend. Hopefully, Nigeria can uh, get all three points in that match. Uh, let's move on from Nigeria quickly and tell you about uh, the uh, UFO Nations League uh, that went down uh, yesterday between uh, France and Belgium. Belgium looked at the points like they were on their way into uh, the final, but was a remarkable comeback from France. Theo Hernandez scoring a late winner for the French national side after thrilling by two goals to nail to win 3-2. The night in the final, they'll be taking on Spain on Sunday. What a game that was well, very dramatic. Uh, uh, exactly. What a classic. I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, how would you throw away three go uh, two goal lead. Yeah, these well, things happen. It happens anyway. But, uh, well, I wish, I wish uh, France uh, uh, all the best. But most mm -hmm. times, this particular Belgian national team, that they are big, they are already underachievers. Yeah, you know, that's what they are. That, that's really? What they are. Yeah. Jide uh, in London. Let's go to Jide quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, do you agree with your namesake uh, mm -hmm. saying uh, the Belgian national side are underachievers already? I mean, there's a team filled with talents uh, uh, from back to front yeah i mean um belgium is a fantastic team they've got super talents 
But the saying goes in football that talent is not enough. Mm. You know, you've got to have a system that works for your team. You've got to have leaders on the pitch. The teams that win the most tournaments or they win the most trophies are the teams with enough leaders and captains. So it's not just the player with the captain's band. It, it goes through the team. What happens in adversity? How do you react, you know, in such a situation? I mean, you're two goals up in the semifinal. You know you're looking at the final. You know France is going to come at you. Sometimes it's not to the coaches. Footballers, sometimes we take responsibilities on the pitch. Oh. And again, it's looking at those players, you know, the De Bruyne's, the Advederaud, you know, players who've been around Betongins. How mm. do we play them? How do we contain them? So there's a lot more to football than just the talent. And um, if you can see, when you have a team like France, you have uh, Mbappe, you've got Benzema, probably one of the hottest strikers in Europe now, and Griezmann. True. There goes everywhere coming at you. And you've got Pogba in the middle as well. You know they're going to come at it. I mean, at 2-0, you don't have anything to lose anymore. You might as well mm. just go for it. That's what France did yesterday. And uh, kudos to the players on the pitch. Kudos to the coach as well. I mean, coming back to beat Belgium like that, wow. I mean, uh, fantastic achievement. And for Martinez and his boys, yeah. I think mm, they just got to look you know, at themselves now and go, where next? I mean, we've talked about Belgium. We've raved about them for the last few years. Yeah. But nothing has happened. We've got Lukaku up front as well. Mm. I think everything is just going to change. The mindset is going to change. It's hard to become a winner when you're used to losing. Mm. So where Belgium have not really won anything or a lot in the last few years, they go in and there's that thing at the back of their minds. So yeah. they've just got to come that and go, we've got great players. We've just got to show what we've got and go on to win as well. So I'm sure they will come back from this as well. It's a big lesson. It's part of yeah. their development as well. Indeed. Uh, to answer your question, uh, where next uh, for the golden generation of uh, the Belgian uh, national team? That's the World Cup. Perhaps next year might just be the year in Qatar. But fingers crossed. Jide, mm -hmm. want to thank you for joining us on the show. Appreciate it. Fantastic debut, I have to say. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope to see you some other time. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. Cheers. All right, so that's it for Belgium. Let's take a listen to the post-match thoughts of Roberto Martinez. Obviously, he's a very disappointed man. You're welcome back. Uh, Roberto Martinez, uh, obviously very disappointed in the manner in which uh, they lost out to France in the UEFA Nations uh, League. Before we uh, look at the papers, uh, let's also tell you that it's a new era for Newcastle United. The takeover of the club has been completed and the fans are absolutely ecstatic that Mike Ashley is no longer the owner of the club. This is very interesting. Fans celebrating their club being bought. Incredible scenes are coming from outside of the St. James's Park yesterday. Yep, good. Now, and the, the Premiership will have an El Kashiko, right? <laughs> yes, that's because uh, <laughs> so expect players to start moving into Newcastle, telling us how they love the projects mm. and how um, they've lo always loved the Newcastle. Newcastle when they were right from their young <laughs> age and all that. We know what money does anyway. Yeah. So it's good uh, because one thing that, I, that the Saudis have been able to understand, they've been able the soft power of football now. Mm. I think they understood that and they, they were bent on buying this club. They did mm. everything that were requested. The orders that they had to pull it down. Mm. They had to pull down the orders because they knew that this is the chance for us to join the Qataris also right now mm. to begin to wield some influence using sports as, mm. a, as a soft, uh, the soft power of sports. So, mm. um, so, well, so that's it, sir. The mm. unpopular reign of mm. Mike Ashley as it's, the owner it's of Newcastle United is over, and the, the new owner is, is cashed out over mm. 300 million pounds sterling. Uh, but the new owners are talking about how they're ready to invest. They want to go on to the top of the league and win the league and the titles as well. So, so very interesting to see uh, the first player that they bring in. Maybe Ronaldo. No, not Ronaldo. <laughs> Ronaldo <laughs> Maybe could, Mbappe. Ronaldo could jump the ship. No, Eric, the other guys could do that. Maybe Mbappe. Bring the correct. cash. Flash the cash and we are ready. Oh, Holland. Anyways, mm. uh, congratulations to Newcastle fans. I've got a couple of them 
as my mates as well too. They're very ecstatic uh, this morning. It's like they've won uh, a title, uh, but we'll see. Take over. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. We begin to see those big players move on. Now. Indeed. All right, Jude. Many thanks uh, for coming on the show again. It's a pleasure. The time. Uh, so, uh, always a delight having you. Thank you all for watching as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a fantastic weekend as well. I am Taya Salam.